class, my name is Craig Canavan, and I am here to talk about receptive language processing disorder. First of all, it's important to understand language in order to communicate effectively with one another. It's also important to understand reading, written, and oral communications. Language impairment is an abnormal or atypical developmental sequence disrupting the communications process. Some causes, brain injury, genetics, and even the environment or lack of a social environment can be causes. Some characteristics of uh, receptive language impairment. Maybe a student is unable or a child is unable to follow oral directions. A uh, child or a student may have poor concept formation. Some challenges that the child or student will face. Obviously, personal, personal interaction with one another. They may withdraw from social intera uh, interactions. Also, success in school or failure in school. And later on in life, possibly employment. Next, I want to talk about the language process. <clears throat> there are three parts to the language process. There's a sender, the receiver, and a message that's trying to be conveyed. All three parts need to happen for communication to be effective. Communication can be oral, it can be written, or it can even be a symbol. It can be a gesture. For example, someone waving their hand. It's a way to say hello. Basically, it's an ex communication is, a, is an exchange of information that needs to be understood by the receiver in order for the message to have a meaning. Next, I want to talk about the aspects of language. There are three aspects of language. First one, form. Form consists of phonology or the various the rules governing the various sound combinations morphology, or the rules governing prefixes and suffixes added to words that change the meaning of a word, and syntax, which is the sentence structure, or the word order of a sentence. The second aspect is content, or the intent or meaning of a sentence. Third aspect is use. How is the sentence used uh, within a social context? When talking about receptive language, uh, what we're trying to determine is can the student comprehend instructions? Can they follow guidelines or rules? Can they follow a proper sequence of events? Next, I want to introduce a speech language pathologist. The SLP, or speech language pathologist, is a person who would be contacted to help assess or test individuals, children, that we feel may have a language impairment. Once it's been diagnosed that the child has a language impairment based on certain tests and criteria, uh, proper evaluation by the speech language pathologist, the family would be notified. The school, the teachers, and the speech language pathologist would all get together and create an IEP, or an individualized education program, for that child. We all know that proper assessment and early intervention could lead to big differences and good long-term results. So it's a very important aspect. Next, I'd like to talk about effective teaching methodologies. These are methodologies used to help facilitate receptive language development. Maybe a teacher could rephrase or repeat instructions for someone who is struggling with following a sequence of events or following instructions. Uh, the teacher could also try one-step instructions, one step at a time, maybe building up towards multi-step instructions. 
The teacher could also ask the student to repeat the instructions or maybe have the student show the teacher that they understand what is being asked of them. Another concept would be to promote verbalizing any confusion in the classroom or to promote questions in the classroom. That way there's a sense of belonging and uh, it just helps facilitate uh, interaction between the teacher, the classmates, and the child who is possibly uh, having a language impairment. Another methodology would be graphic organizers. Graphic organizers is pretty much just a visual organization of crucial or vital information. For example, take a map, take charts, tables, it's just extracting the most important information so that we can recognize what is being talked about or communicated. Lastly, I would just like to talk about a personal experience I've had over the last two years. Uh, I am also a soccer coach and I train with a under 10 boys team and Two years ago, I started working with this team and I found out I was struggling to reach uh, a number of the players on the team, uh, one boy in particular, who couldn't follow my instructions, who would do parts of the drills or exercises that I set up. And uh, after struggling with working with this child and trying to get the most out of him and trying to have him understand what was being asked of him. I spoke with his mother and she notified me that he had a receptive language processing disorder. Um, he could only take a certain number of steps at a time. So, um, working with her and working with the child, we came up with a few effective teaching or coaching methodologies that we put in place and now the child is experiencing some success. Uh, we added visual aids on the soccer field. We use magnetic boards to show where the movements should happen on the soccer field. We've used video of the games or practices to show the boys what they need to be doing or where their shape should be. We've also used positive reinforcement with each step or each skill. Lastly, we just came to the conclusion that the child must recognize success. And this child has recognized success as he has been one of the better performers now on the team because we've broken down these steps for him. So with that, I'd like to end my discussion on receptive language processing disorders. I'd like to thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thank you.